Okay, Houston will try to pick you up on high gain. Roger. And 13, we're uh, ready on the TV when you are. This is uh, 13, thank you, Houston. 13, we're ready on the TV when you are, anytime. Okay, sounds good. We'll hit a minute. We're just pranking the bike game now. Okay, Houston, how are you? We're just sitting on high gate. We're hearing you five square, Jim. How me? Okay, you're coming through, okay? As you were on that, Jim, uh, we don't have you on the high gain yet. Uh, we're still looking at you. 13, Houston. In this attitude, we'd suggest pitch five, yaw 237 on the high gain, over. Pitch five, yaw 237. Okay, Jack, can you uh, can you read the high gain now? Affirmative, Jack. We've got you on a high gain. That appears to us we're in wide beam, wide beam width. Yeah, uh, we can't get it to uh, go down and narrow. We try to switch to auto track or react, and uh, and it uh, yaw drives around from 270 to zero. And pitch goes through about six degrees uh, around to 90. Uh, I'll try and, uh, we're sitting at manual now at the angles that you gave us, and I'll try and uh, get you in medium and narrow uh, beam with uh, tweaking it up manually here. Roger, Jack. Uh, meanwhile, we'll look at the uh, situation you described there. Okay. And it does it on both uh, sets of uh, servo electronic power. Jack, what it looks like is that uh, when we hit 239 degrees uh, at this attitude, it hit some sort of scan limit or something and uh, drops off. Roger, Jack. Thank you. Okay, I'm trying to get wide uh, or medium uh, beam width now. Can you uh, pick up the TV in uh, this condition here at all? Negative, Jack. We'll have to uh, have the narrow beam with. Okay. Uh, can you give us uh, maybe a slight maneuver? Jack, we'd like you to uh, check two high gain circuit breakers down on panel 25. Check your high gain group two and your high gain on the flight bus. Over. Okay. Okay, Jack, they're both in. Roger.
13, we've got an attitude suggestion for you. We suggest that you uh, go to a roll 285 and try pitch 90 and yaw 0. Over. Okay. Okay, uh, Houston, tunnel 13, I think we've got high gain locked up now. Do you confirm? We confirm that, Jim. We've got you locked up on the high gain and narrow beam. Okay, sounds good. We'll get the TV uh, started right away. Roger. Houston, uh, we'd like to disable quad C and D. Use Alpha and Bravo, over. Okay. okay, 13, we've got uh, Fredo on TV. Uh, Roger, Houston. What we plan to do for you today is start out in the uh, spaceship or uh, Odyssey and take you on through from Odyssey uh, into the tunnel into Aquarius and show you a little bit of uh, the landing uh, vehicle. And uh, your TV operator is now resting on the center couch looking at uh, Fred Hayes, whose head is now just about at the beginning of the tunnel and his back is against the or the optical uh, area, and Fred will uh, now uh, transport himself into the tunnel and into the uh, spaceship Aquarius. You know, one thing I noted, uh, Jack, when I first came across there, that uh, starting uh, upright in the command module and uh, heading down in Aquarius, uh, uh, there's a little bit of an orientation change that uh, we saw at Nimbrook once uh, in the water tank. Uh, it's still pretty unusual. I find myself uh, now uh, standing with my head on the floor when I get down inside the limb. That's a great picture, Jim. Uh, you got okay. the light just right. One of the nice things, uh, Jack, uh, particularly for a novice like myself, is the uh, the ease of uh, moving around in here. And, uh, of course, as you know from working in the uh, command module transmitter, it's really quite a boon to uh, have zero gravity as an aid. It's uh, pretty uh, confining, really, at 1G to move around very much in there, and it's uh, quite easy. Uh, the lamp, as you can see, it uh, looked pretty clean. I found a couple of loose washers, about it, and the uh, a little plastic cap off the uh, sequence camera had come loose, and I found it uh, lodged over by the uh, ED panel. Okay. Uh, right under... Uh, Jim now, he's uh, actually standing on a uh, what looks to be a can here, and uh, for the sake of all the people back there, uh, housed inside this can is the, uh, the Lamb Massa engine, where uh, 
hopefully you can see my hand I'm resting on top of right now. The engine that uh, we used to get off of the moon. Immediately uh, adjacent to uh, the uh, engine cover here, I have my hand on a, a white box now, which uh, has been shown before. Uh, this uh, happens to be uh, Jim's uh, list, or uh, the backpack, which will uh, supply oxygen and uh, water for cooling while on the lunar surface. Uh, this uh, device uh, we hope to uh, make use of for uh, plan four hours and possibly up to as much as uh, five hours. Right, uh, right behind the cliff. A uh, couple of square packages I now have my hand on here. One here and one right below are our OPSs, which are in essence the emergency uh, oxygen supplies, which are good for some uh, 40 to 45 minutes. These are when we uh, get ready to uh, mount up and head outside, uh, we'll be placed up on top of the cliff. Uh, the second backpack is uh, mounted down on the uh, limb floor uh, and will position uh, right between uh, the two of us. I have my hand on it uh, at this time. Roger, Fred, we see it. Uh, the picture's coming through real good, and uh, your description is good. We see uh, Jim's got the camera oriented uh, the way we like to look at it. So we'll keep talking. Okay, I guess uh, everybody is uh, pretty much envisioned the uh, space program as being uh, all uh, a lot of exotic electronics, and uh, certainly a lot of it is. But I uh, thought I'd bring out a couple items here uh, in conjunction with the plist. Uh, after the first DVA, uh, to get a very accurate measurement of the amount of water that's left in the blisters, we're going to make use of uh, this bag I'm showing now to uh, collect the remaining water out of the blisters and see uh, just how much we really did have left. And uh, hopefully on uh, future missions to be uh, able to extend uh, safely uh, the allowable time on these units uh, even a little further. And uh, my other hand, I have the uh, mechanism by which we uh, determine just how much uh, water we really have in this bag. And I guess this, uh, an apt description for this device would be uh, a fish scale. And uh, you can see I'm weighing myself right now and uh, says I weigh uh, actually less than zero right now. I guess it's calibration isn't too good. That'll be the day. I think even you would weigh zero here, Jack. Touche. Uh, Houston, uh, this is Jim, uh, since Fred's been in the, uh, lunar module, since he's the lunar module pilot, this is the first time that he's felt that he's right side up. Roger, Jim. I might, uh, tell you that we're looking at right now that round, uh, bag that's just behind Fred to hold our uh, vacuum hose that when we get back inside the lab we'll hook the vacuum off our suits and it's resting or it's attached to the hatch which will uh, we will open to uh, go onto the lunar surface and of course to come back in. Uh, the hatch which we uh, have come through now is a round hatch which is our docking hatch between the uh, between Odyssey and the uh, 
Roger, and uh, we see Fred looking in the vacuum cleaner there now. Okay, what I have out now, uh, Jack, is uh, uh, Leva, which has also uh, been shown before. It's a uh, head garment uh, for wearing out on the surface. And I, uh, I'm bringing gems out here to show a couple of mods. Uh, one problem before is that uh, the cast of characters out on the surface uh, haven't been able to uh, be distinguished apart uh, very well. So uh, not only Jim's suit has some red stripes on it, uh, but as you can see, uh, his Leva also has a, uh, a red stripe. And uh, now you can see one other mod, too, here, Jack, which I hadn't really uh, seen myself before. Uh, I guess on uh, 12, uh, Pete Nell had uh, commented about the... Uh, commented about having trouble with sunlight in the eyes, so on our levers, uh, they have uh, put on a new center section, uh, which you can pull down and use uh, sort of like a baseball cap. Okay, Jack, who fixed up my lever? <laughs> How's the uh, detail on this one, Jack? Say again, Fred. Uh, can you see any detail on this picture now, or am I blocking out too much of the sunlight? That's affirmative. Uh, we got a good picture of the lever there, and uh, it's coming through loud and clear. Okay. Okay. Uh Jack, well, uh, Fred's putting away my uh, helmet. You're looking over into Fred Station now. now. How's this picture? Is it okay before do I have to adjust it? Uh, we have a hunch that uh, the setting might be in peak, but we recommend uh, average on the AOC if you haven't got it there already. We're in average, Jack. Okay, and uh, we're getting a good picture of the LMP side with the uh, beta over there. Hey, Jack, uh, one question on the command box here. Uh, do I, I have the DAP right now, wide dead band. Do you want me to begin setting up narrow dead band and knowing the race to start PTC again? Stand by, Jack. Uh, what I'm uh, fishing out now, Jack, is another uh, new piece of hardware that uh, uh, we're taking along this time uh, as a result of some comments made on uh, uh, Apollo 12 flight. What uh, Fred is opening up is a drink bag that we place in side of our uh, neck ring uh, that uh, will allow us to drink while we're on the lunar surface. Uh, they, Pete and Al, do not have that in uh, Apollo 12, and the 
consequently got very thirsty. Uh, but we hope to alleviate that situation by having uh, our own little uh, bag of water, which uh, with very little effort we can uh, have a sip or two while we're looking around and uh, doing our geology work. So, uh, if you hear any funny noises, uh, it's just uh, probably the drink bag. The red does. Okay, uh, Jack, have you got that uh, picture now? Uh, Fred, about one quarter of our screen is uh, lighted, and uh, it's impossible to uh, determine what you're looking at right now. Maybe you could give us a little verbal description. Okay, it's uh, looking through the uh, AOT in uh, position uh, four, uh, right rear, and uh, we're looking back uh, toward the... Uh, over the uh, side hatch at the uh, aft side of the uh, service module. Okay, is, uh, the, is it too dark a picture, Jack? Uh, you think the f-stop open may help? No, Fred, it's got to be centered up a little bit. That's uh, primarily what you have to do. Jack, uh, we can't turn it up anymore because uh, the uh, side hatch is only in one part of the AOT. The rest of that blackness you're seeing is really uh, uh, space. Okay, we'll try another one then. It's a little better centered, in fact, the only other one we have that uh, shows uh, the whole picture. Uh, we're in the forward D10 of the AOT now, position two. And uh, you should be seeing uh, something uh, familiar like a radar antenna. Okay, we see you moving the uh, camera up to the AOT lens, and we got a real good picture now. Okay, 
Okay, uh, Jack, I'm looking out the uh, right window now, and uh, not too far off in the distance now, you can see the, uh, the objective. And I'll zoom in on it here a little and see if it brings it in better. It's actually uh, beginning to look a little bigger now. Uh, uh, you can see quite distinctly uh, some of the features uh, with the naked eye. And uh, so far, I guess I have to even agree with uh, Jim that it's uh, still looking pretty uh, gray uh, with a white spot. Okay, Fred, we're getting a good uh, picture of your destination there. And Jack, you can look at the uh, at Fred's workshop now, and you can see the... Uh the board guide to the computer. And over there in the tucked away in his uh, armrest uh, is our activation checklist, which will be used very shortly. Up at the top of the window, we have uh, our uh, camera already mounted, uh, ready for uh, the photograph of the descent. And now, Fred uh, engaged in his favorite pastime found out on this flight so far. He's not in the food locker, is he? That's his second favorite pastime. He's, he's rigging his hammock for sleep on the lunar surface now to try it out to see what it's going to be like. Roger, uh, sleeping and then eating. It's kind of difficult here, uh, Jack, uh, getting into a hammock in zero G. I'm not uh, sure if I keep floating away from it or uh, it keeps moving away from me. If you notice a few things floating around, uh, we found oh, just about one or two washers occasionally. And for the benefit of those that may wonder uh, where uh, Jim sleeps, uh, it'd be a little difficult to rig his hammock in here uh, right now uh, with the hatch open, but his uh, runs laterally in this direction, uh, 4 a.m. So uh, he has the uh, upper berth and uh, I, uh, I get the lower berth. And uh, now while uh, Fred's uh, taking his hammock down and restoring it, I might give you some idea of the sort of confusion of attitude since there is no up or down. And I'm uh, situated on top of the Aston engine uh, just at the uh, entrance to the tunnel. I'll reverse the camera 180 degrees and go from Fred, look through the tunnel again back at Odyssey, and we might pick up part of Jack.
There he is. We see him. Yeah, we sure are. We got a uh, good picture of the skipper there. Okay, well, we can show you now. Uh, we'll have a added benefit. Uh, we've got the drogue on uh, Fred's uh, couch in the command module right now. Uh, we stood it temporarily uh, while we're checking out the uh, on Aquarius. And underneath his uh, couch, we've got the uh, probe stowed. Quite a big commerce device. And maybe we'll get a, sh a shot of it for you. now at our uh, probe that we uh, place uh, on the nose of uh, Odyssey. Uh, it's a very heavy thing, but uh, of course in uh, zero gravity it uh, weighs nothing and it's much easier to move around. As a matter of fact, both uh, Fred and Jack commented, as many people in the past have, uh, of how much uh, bigger the spacecraft appears uh, in actual flight uh, when you have such ease of movement compared to our simulators, which we train rather difficult. Okay, we're seeing a good picture of the probe there, uh, Jim, and uh, looks like the characters uh, shaved before the show this time. Well, Fred said he had to keep up his TV image. Yeah, that may be uh, my first and last time, though, Jack. It took Fred one hour to shave. Uh, we might 
might uh, give you a quick uh, a quick shot of our entertainment on board the spacecraft, which has been keeping us company for some time. Okay, Jim, uh, we're seeing the tape recorder now, and uh, just by the way, how long do you expect to keep the TV on this evening? Okay, Jim, uh, it's been a real good TV show. Uh, we think we ought to conclude it from here now. Uh, what do you think? Roger, sounds good. And this is the crew of Apollo 13. Wish everybody there a nice evening. And uh, we're just about ready to close out our inspection of Aquarius and get back for a pleasant evening at Odyssey. Good night. Thank you, 13.